Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO. Today's topic of training is CAST journal. In this, we will be covering the overview on CAST journal, the configuration steps, and the unit testing. Overview CAST journal is a sub ledger of bank accounting. It manages company's cash transaction, that is all cash receipts and payments. One company can have multiple cash journals. Automatically calculates the balances, that is the opening and the closing balances. Elaborating more, cash journal is an online cash book in SAP system, where the users or the company management can check the opening balances, closing balances for the day, the total amount of different transactions of payments and receipts been done for a particular day or for a particular period or a particular date range. Cash journal as said is a sub ledger of bank accounting. It is used to manage the company's cash transactions. It allows you to post cash documents for whatever the cash expenses, cash receipts, cash withdrawal from bank or cash deposited to banks, any such transactions or even cash paid to vendors. So all the cash transactions are taken up in the cash journal only. There is no other place where you can do your cash transactions except the cash journal. In this the system automatically calculates and displays the opening and the closing balances to you on the basis of the receipts and the payments totals. You can run several cash journals for each company code. You can also carry out the postings to different GL accounts as well as to the vendors and the customer account. We'll see in a while that the cash journal is a single screen transaction where all the cash transactions are posted, the changes in the document can be done, then again the display of cash transactions can be looked over there in one particular screen. Taking more on the practical side, cash journal, there are multiple cash journal in any organizations. Cash journal is more or more of a pity cashier kind of a thing where the cash is managed with the pity cashier where he takes care of all the small expenses and all these things in the business and even it is being taken care for the business other transactions like uh, anything which is uh, small amounts in transactions so so suppose take an example that a particular company have got different branches or different plants for a manufacturing concern and all those will be having obviously different pity cashiers in their different branches or different manufacturing plants. So obviously they would be needing different cash journals or different journals need to be maintained. So in the system on the basis of such practical requirements and the scenarios we can have those cash journal maintained in the system and if you have got multiple branches and you need multiple cash journals to be maintained in the system we can maintain multiple cash journals as the organization's requirements are so if you have got multiple requirements we will be creating multiple journals where the the status of that particular pity cashiers can be easily known with the system because it's all transparent every transactions take place in real time in the system and it shows you the updated balances of the cash in the business in the configuration part we'll be doing the creating GL account for cash journal where all the cash transactions will be stored defining the document types define number range for cash journal document every cash journal documents will have a separate document number so as to easily identify with that particular series that this series of document represents your cash transactions setup cash journal in the setup cash journal part we create different 
or multiple cash journals as per the requirement of the business. For example, if an organization have got uh, 10 different branch or plant and they want 10 different cash journals in the system so that all those uh, 10 different branches cash transaction status can be seen in the system so we can prepare or we can create those 10 different cash journals for the branch or the plant as per the requirement so in the same way you can have n number of cash journals in the system next is create change delete business transactions so there are different type of business transactions which take place in a business and all those business transactions cash transactions are termed as business transactions over here business transactions basically refers to like cash sales could be there there could be cash purchases cash paid to vendor cash received from customer cash from bank cash to bank or any other kind of a cash expenses these are different business transactions which can happen in any business so all those transactions which are probable chances to take place in the business we need to create those business transactions in the system and then the setting up print parameters for cash journal so once you post any business transactions into in the system you need the print of those transactions at times as well so to print those things we need certain print parameters to be maintained in the system and that has been done with the help of a technical consultant in SAP. So we'll see how these configurations are done and once these are done we will be doing the unit testing on the basis of the configurations and we'll see how these things work fine in the system. So. So as a part of first configuration step, we will be creating a cash journal GL account and we'll see what are the changes for customization we need to do for a cash GL account. Let's move to the SAP screen for the transaction FS00. So moving to the screen FS00, let's see whether already we have defined any kind of a cash GL as of now in the system or not. So let's search the list of GL account. So you can see on the screen that there is already a CAS account existing in the system which we created earlier and probably we must have done certain transactions to this as well so what you need to do now onwards is that we'll be using this particular GL only for our cash journal customization process but in that case you need to do a slight change whenever we map any cash account for cash journal there are certain fields which need to be specifically set so suppose we take this GL over here and we move to this change option so you will see that the GL descriptions are already there in, it, in place you can see over here and cash account is there the control data is already in place everything is fine and if you move to the next is the create bank interest everything is fine but you just have to need to take care of one thing that is you need to select this post automatic only field you need to select this because now onwards when we are customizing a cash journal that means we are looking forward that all the cash transactions will be done with the help of this particular cash journal only that means there will not be any other manual process of booking cash or making any cash transactions in the system whatever the option is that is the cash journal so to make that mandatory we need to select this GL as post automatic only when you select this as a post automatic that means this GL will be always will be routed through the cash journal and not through any manual processes other than that so the benefit with this is that this will directly affect the balances of your cash journal part only and it will not affect anywhere else 
so you need to select this post automatic only field the rest of the fields will remain as usual same as it used to be so once i did it uh, have take the post automatically only you can go and you can save the screen over here so once i have saved you can go to ok and your changes are been done so even if you want you can revisit this uh, same cash jewel again if you can see that there is a cash group is asset balance sheet description is there in it the control data contains the same thing as you used to take earlier text code as a star in the post without text allowed has to be ticked and cash is not a part of reconciliation account that's why this has been blank over here and it will it will remain blank moving next is you need to take the line item display over here which is a mandatory part and then moving to the next tab over here we took the filled status group as g001 you can see it's been taken as g001 but one change i did in this is that i need to take the post automatically only tick mark over here so that the system will automate this particular cash account gl for cash journal purpose and in this way it will automatically update your closing and opening balances depending upon the kind of a transactions whether it is a receipt or a payment so this is what the first step of customization is that you need to create a cash gl if it is not there in the system and if it is there you can even use the same cash journal but you need to select the post automatically only filled in that so that's what the part of first customization in it moving to the second is defining the document type for cash journal documents so now there are two way outs to look at this one is a path and one is a transaction code so let's move with the path with the path you need to go to first spro standard transaction for all the uh, customization path need to click on to the img then we are already working in financial accounting new so we'll click on to the financial accounting new tab in this as we already discussed cash journal is a part of bank accounting so we need to open the bank accounting tab in bank accounting we need to go to business transactions as you can read the path as well over here bank accounting cash transaction then the cash journal so when you open these particular bank sorry business transactions tab will find that there is an option of cash journal in it so opening cash journal these are the steps of customization where we need to go to this define document type for cash journal documents so we can open this particular tab explore so once we explore you will find that this is the list of all the document types in sap so in this you can see that there are a list of document types but in cash journal the document type which is used is ab this is the document type which is always been taken and this is the document type which will be working as a document type for your cash transactions cash journal transactions so this is it nothing else has to be done you just need to check back so that is what it will be taking up over there that ab document type will be the type of document which will be there for cash journal documents so you don't need to do much customization in it it is the standard sap document type for cash journal documents moving to the next transaction so the next customization step that is defining the number range for cash journal documents so an important step since now we have seen that uh, every document has its own document number range we have seen that for vendor payment there is a different document series for vendor invoice there is a different document number series is there for customer invoice customer payment there is a different series for that in the same way you will see that uh, for bank they will be different for assets they will be different in the same way for cash journal you you can have your own different cash journal document number range so that is what we will be defining and it's good to have a different number range 
because it becomes easier for you to identify that particular document with that particular number range or number series and you can easily come to know that this particular series belongs to your CAS journal part or with something else. So moving to this particular screen now there is another tab over here you can see fill define number range for intervals for CAS journal documents. So we need to go to this execute. Once you execute you need to put the company code over here. So the company code is 1200. You can go to this display option over here if there is any number range maintained. So as of now there is no number range maintained for CAS. Now going back we can maintain the number range over here. So we need to go to this change interval click on it and now we can go to this plus interval or insert interval tab click on this and now we can add our own cash journal document number range so suppose I take the serial number serial number is one zero and now you can see over there there is a small difference in this when we used to create the document number range earlier with FB and one transaction code if you remember there was there used to uh, be a field of year as well in that but over here there is no year because those document number range keep on changing with each fiscal year but cash journal number range remains the same it doesn't change with the, with every year it change in case the range has been exhausted or has been completely used so now I am being having the number range over here suppose is so suppose I create the number range over here with the series 8 keeping in mind that 8 is something which we can easily relate with as cash journal so I am putting it over here as 8000000289999999 and once you have defined the range over here you can go to insert so click on to the insert button and it has been inserted and you can now save it so save it once it has been saved that means the number range have been saved for cash journal part so once this has been done we'll move back to the path now once we have the path now we'll be moving to the next configuration step that is setup cash journal now moving to the next is setup cash journal over here so these two steps are there which are optional which is not needed that's why we are not taking that over here we'll move directly to the setup cash journal part click on to the cash journal and you can see there are a number of different cash journal already maintained in the system but these are for different company codes we need to create for our own company code so what I will be doing right now is now over here you can see very clearly that there is a CJ number that is CJ number that means the cash journal number cash journal number which can also be referred as the petty cashier number suppose in a company they are there are five petty cashiers and you want all those five different petty cashiers accounts to be separate from each other so how can you distinguish that so for that we can create five different cash journal numbers for petty cashiers and on the basis of this they will be able to easily do their transactions in their own particular CJ numbers or petty cashiers and it will not create any problem and anyone can have a separate report for them that what are the transactions being done by that particular PT cashier for the day or for the period as they wish to. So this is an option given because PT cash or a cash journal is something which is uh, which is always used as a multiple in numbers with with any organizations. So we will be configuring this for our particular part and we'll see how this has been done so what I will be doing now is I will be taking any one or two of them and I will copy with that and wherever I need the changes to be done I will be making the changes accordingly so there will not be any problem so I am just copying the first two from over here and once I have copied you can see that those two 
two different lines have been copied over here. Now I can replace my requirements over here as per the need. And the first column over here is the company code. So what I will be doing is I will be replacing this 0005 with my own company code that is 1200. The second thing I would be doing is the CJ number. So what I will be putting the CJ number as what I shall take. So let's take 1 as 1210 and another is 1220. Assuming that these are two different branches or two different plants where there are two different pitti cashiers and they are maintaining the pitti cash with that particular branch but those uh, this CJ numbers have been defined so that those pitti cashiers will be able to book their transactions in the SAP system and from anywhere in the any from any corner we can have a look to the those transactions that what are those pretty cases are doing and what is the transactions they are doing on a daily basis so if there is any pretty cashier head he can go through all those transactions and can look for the status of that that what is the closing and the opening balances so i am taking two different pretty cashier number that is cj number which will work as a Pitti Cashier 1 and Pitti Cashier 2. Now over here you need to take your GL account. Which GL account? It represents the Cash GL account. So we need to go to over here, search your Cash GL account and that will be assigned over here. Now in this you can see that this is our Cash Journal. The same cash journal will be taken up below over here because the cash account is same. Now over here you need to change your currency. My currency for my company code is US dollar. So I will be changing my currency to USD. Cash journal closed. Now this column. It does happens that uh, a particular cashier was working with you and he had a separate CJ number with him and uh, he may left the company any point of time. So would you continue the same CJ number with somebody else? You could do that. One of the option. The another option could be if you don't want to continue with the same CJ number, you want to close that CJ number because that belonged to, us, uh, to another person who has left and there may be certain disputes which may come up that's why you want a separate CJ number so you can close that particular CJ number for that particular pitti cashier. So in case you close you need to tick mark this. If you tick this you will not be able to post any transactions in this particular CJ number which you have selected. So right now we will not be selecting any of them because we need both of them to be used but in the future if any of them we want to close we can close by coming back to this customization and we can tick this cash journal closed option and that will be done. Moving next is now these are different document types these will be remain as usual as these are these are the standard document types will be used AB is used for GL to GL transactions in both. KZ is used for vendor transactions that is vendor payment. This both KZ, KZ will be used over here. You can see over here when you when you put the cursor over here. This is nah, this is for vendor both and this is for customer payments. So once you have done these you can move again ahead and now we can see that this is your cash payment group that is not needed these things are not needed in the system now so no split line item for this nothing is needed over here if you want to name this cash journal you can name it for example uh, it, be, it may be becoming difficult for me to remember that 1210 is handled by by which branch or by which uh, particular person who is the pitti cashier so I can name that branch over here so if you want you can name that particular person over here or that branch over here so I can name it as branch 1 
and the same way if you want you can even name the second one over here so that it become easier for you to recognize the things and you will not get confused anywhere in the future so the cj name has been put up over here as branch 1 and branch 2 if you want to be very specific and you know the branch name you can put the branch name over here that will be more easier for you to handle it and again there are two tabs over here for person 1 and person 2 if you've seen person 1 and person 2 so in case the CJ has been handled by two different people maybe one could be a senior one could be a junior so even you can put the name over here for that branch that the branch name is branch 1 but the person who are handling is 1 and 2 name can be put up over here so this is what you can do over here in this particular part so this is what the cache journal setup is all about we need to set up the cache journal that is the PT cashier account whether it will be two accounts of pt cashier or n number of different account as we have defined for over here that we have only two that is one two one zero and one two two zero one two one zero is for branch one and one zero one two two zero is for branch two so this is what you are expected to do and now we have copied this so there will not be any option of save this has been grayed out to save so you need to click on to the enter on the keyboard so once we enter on the keyboard you can see the message comes to you account 00002 posted with currency this ok so this has been done so now we can save this and once we save it our cash journal setup is complete so you can see over here the data was saved and these are the two different PTCAS numbers we have created that is the CJ number. So PTCAS over here is represented by CAS journal number that is 1210 and 1220. Going back now and now we can move to the next step of configuration. It is create, change, delete business transactions. So the transaction again the path is there we can go, go to the path you can see over here very next is it create change delete business transactions go to the execute option over here execute once you execute you will see that the number of different so now over here we need to create the business transactions now as said already there could be different business transactions as you can see on the screen these are the different business transactions defined by the already defined over here by default standard SAP system uh, there could be cash transfer from bank can transfer to bank payment from customer payment to vendor there could be cash purchases for office material there could be cash sales uh, there are different number of such transactions which can happen in any organization so depending upon your list of business transactions you can define your own different cash journal business transactions which the client thinks that will happen in the future so now we'll be creating those transactions because until you create those business transactions you will not be able to do such business cash transactions for those particular business transactions so what I will be doing is now I will be creating those business transactions over here so we can go to new entries and now over here we need to take the company code in the first column 1200 then we can move to the next is the business now let's over move to let's first put the cash journal business transactions so one two zero zero so suppose the first is cash from bank the another could be cash to bank other could be cash sales a very common transactions which does happen with any business next could be cash 
purchases now this cash purchases may include any kind of a purchases for day to day purpose like any kind of a miscellaneous purchases any kind of a stationaries purchase and such can be taken in this then again cash from customer could be there there could be cash paid to vendors could one of the transactions so these are the some of those basic transactions business transactions which take place in the cash general part so these are what i would be taking over here you need to put the company code over here now depending upon the kind of a business transactions you need to select your business transaction type in the third column so we'll go to this first now for creating the business transaction type we can move over here and we can see now in this screen there are number of different business transactions keys are there types these are different types depending upon the business transactions you need to define like payment to bank so payment to bank and payment from bank depending upon the transaction so this is cash from bank this is cash to bank the first one is referred to b over here cash from bank refers to the second one that is c in the same way you can go to cash sales cash sales is basically a part of revenue for the organization so revenue is over here as r in the same way cash purchases cash purchases is a part of normally expenses expenses will be booked in the e part same way we can move to the cash customer postings now so for customer we need to take d and for vendor we need to take k so moving to the next is now we have defined the business transaction types now the next thing we need to do is over here transaction classification so we don't have to do anything in this part in the classification uh, transaction classification the next we move to gl account now in gl account we need to assign the general ledger account which will be involved in this business transactions so cash journal gl account is already known in cash journal system we don't need to take the cash journal gl account over here but we need to take the other gl which will be applicable in these cases so cash from bank cash to bank now there could be multiple cash bank gls which can be used so how the system will identify or how you will take over here which gl will you assign it over here suppose in normal practical cases a bank has number of different banks so which bank i shall put up over here for cash transactions cash from bank or cash to bank i am not certain so if i am not certain in those cases i will not be assigning any gl account in these particular gl heads because if i assign it then in that case that particular transaction will go to that particular gl only that is the ledger account else i can keep it as a blank so that that particular blank gl will be used uh, whichever gl will be assigned uh, or will be given manually will be taken up over here but moving to the next is cash sales now in case of cash sales normally sales gl always remains one so in this case we can assign a gl over here we can go to search the gl what are the different gl available in the system for the company code 1200 and in this you can see that there is already a sales account assigned over here so this is a gl which we can assign over here we have selected that in the same way if there is any any expenses gl which you know that which we can take over here we can assign it if we are not certain about those gls you can leave it blank as well but in case you know you can go and you can assign that now let's see the the list of gl over here and in this i am not certain this purchase account may represent the material purchase it may not be relating to the normal purchases for day to day like printing stationeries or other materials for day to day usages so what i will be doing is i will not be assigning this gl over here as of now so once you have assigned these gl over in this screen now we can move to the next and we'll see what is there in it there is nothing else if you want to write any long text you can write it over here as a business transactions so that is what you can name it as 
once you have done this now you can go to save option and you can save it and your business transactions have been defined you can see cash from bank cash to bank or uh, cash sales cash purchases cash from purchase cash paid to vendors now we can go to save option and we can save it so once you save it you can see that there is a GL account or select the indicator change account okay okay so if you don't select any GL over here you need to select either of these two tabs what we will be doing is if we don't want any GL account to be assigned over here and we want that uh, during the transaction posting we can select the GL account for the alternative GL account then we need to click on to this account modification account modification allows you to change your GL account over here it will remain blank and the next step over here you can see this is the text code so in case you want while doing the transactions you want different transactions or different text codes can be used for transactions you can even select that over here so in case of banking this is not needed we can move to the next even in case of bank to cash from uh, to bank is not needed ha, in case of cash purchases you may be needing text modification so as to have different text assignments allowed to you for this particular transaction and now once you have done that you can save this screen and all your customization has been done because we don't need to select for D and K over here because this is understood that it will be multiple customers and vendors from whom the business cash transactions can happen in a business so this is what the configuration of business transactions been done in this screen and at times it does happen that we don't we want to stop some or any one of those business transactions out of these six so if you want to restrict any of those business transactions you can go to this business transaction block this particular field over here works for business transaction blocking so once you take any of these any of these suppose I take this so you will not be able to use this business transactions for posting the cash transaction in the system so this is this works this particular field works as a business transactions block which block you from posting these to use that particular transaction business transactions so we'll be right now we'll not be taking it over here we'll take it off so this is how the customizations you need to do for your business transactions creation so as been done now we can go back to the path again and now we can go to this last customization step or the configuration step over here and you can see set up print parameter for cash journal so this is the screen which comes up to you and now in this particular case the program over here is print program you always need to have this particular print program which will be used for you but now what I will be doing is I will be using this copy this is a standard cash journal print program which will be used for printing your cash journal transactions and there is a report variant that is cash DE and there is a correspondence SAP 18 is assigned to it so this is my default SAP system which you need to take over here or even if you want you can take this variant off from over here as well so this are the two important thing the program and the correspondence you always need to take so as to print your cash transactions which have happened in the SAP system enter on the screen and now you can go and you can save this screen over here and all your cash journal configurations have been done so now onwards we will be able to do the postings in the cash journal so moving to the PowerPoint presentation these are the configuration steps which you have completed just now all the configurations have been done now we will be doing the unit testing so moving to the unit testing part the unit testing as already said cash journal is a single screen where all those transactions posting change in the posting document 
display of document or reverse of documents have been done. So the transaction code for this is FBCJ. We'll go to this FBCJ now slash O FBCJ enter. So you can see over here a new screen arrived over here when you clicked onto that. And over here the company code you need to put yours and then you need to select your cash journal. So this is the cash journal which we have created earlier. We created two cash journal 1210 and 1220. These two work as a two different PT cashiers where all the PT transactions with two different people or two different branches can be recorded separately. So if you go for this and we can see how many PT cashier or cash journals are there. You can see there are only two cash journals as created in the customization or the configuration steps earlier. So we'll first take up the first one and we'll see what it shows. Enter. So once you enter it will show you the screen now. So you can see the screen, the screen is totally blank. The opening balance is zero, there is no total cash receipt, no check receipt, no cash payment. The closing balance is always is already blank. So why? Because till now we have not done any cash general transactions. This is the configuration which just happened and yet any cash transaction is to be done, has not taken place. So <coughs> sorry and the transactions which we can do is one can be a cash payment another could be a cash receipt and another could be a cash check receipts so these are those transactions which can take place in this screen and you can see over here everything will be related to cash transactions will be done under this particular screen only now suppose we go for taking up a particular transaction like let's have a cash purchases or cash sales. So let's first we need some receipts over here because without receipts you cannot make the payment. Until you got any receipt the payment will not uh, the system will not allow any cash payments because negative cash payment from the system is not allowed. So first we'll do we'll move and we'll do certain cash receipt transactions. So moving to the cash receipt and now I need to select the business transaction. So you can remember that earlier we just created six business transactions. Let's see what are they. Explore it. Enter. So you can see these are the those six different business transactions which we just created couple of ste steps back. Now I need cash receipt. So for cash receipt either of these transactions which can be taken up. It can be cash from bank or it can be cash from customer or it can be cash sales. So suppose I take cash sales over here. And the amount I need to put up over here is suppose 3000 or dollars I have taken up. So once you have taken this enter it will automatically take your GL over here. Why? Because the GL is already assigned in that. In case of cash sales in that customization we had assigned this GL over here. For rest we have not assigned. So in case you have assigned the GL already the system will all automatically take that GL for the credit posting because debit posting will always be the cash GL. So this is what been done. So you can see the transaction has been as of now is over there but I, it has not yet been posted. You can see this red option over here. This red button says that the entry has been recorded but the entry has not been posted. The entry once will post will get the balance updated over here. So how will this be posted? We need to select this from over here select your transaction once it has been recorded then you need to go to this post option so if i click on to the post now the system will process it to post this particular cash transaction in case it doesn't have any error in it 
So you can see that there is a message comes up balancing field business area in the line item 001 not filled means business area is still missing. So we need to move ahead from over here with the help of tab option tab button on the keyboard or we can move from over here to the right side and you can see that somewhere you will find the business area tab over here. So you can see the business area is coming over here. You need to select your business area. So you can go to F4 key on the keyboard and you can search your own business area. So my business area, if you remember, we defined in the initial part was 12101201230. So I will take 1210 because 1210 refers to my probably the first particular first branch or first plant. So I have taken the business area 1210. Now again I can go to this particular field and now it has not yet been posted because it has converted from red to yellow because in red means the transaction is recorded. Yellow means it has been saved but not posted. So to post it we need to again go back and we need to click on to the post option. So once you will post over here you will see the changes on this screen. So once it has been done you can see now the, the transaction has moved to green. So once the transaction is moved to green that means your, your particular transaction has been successfully posted in the system without any error. So this is it and once this has been posted and moved to green you can see over here your amount has been updated on the screen. So your total cash receipt now is $3000. But your total opening balance is zero because prior to this day there was no balance in this in this particular cash journal part in this particular pity cash here that is one two one zero. Now moving next is there is no check receipt, there is no payment, but the closing balance is three thousand. Now again, you want to do any other transactions, you can move and you can do that. So you can move to this again and you can select again a receipt transaction. Suppose I take another receipt transaction like suppose it could be cash from bank. So I am receiving from the bank. Suppose I receive $5,000. But now when you click onto the enter, you will see that this GL will not update over here. There is a reason behind that as said in cash sales we have already defined the GL in the configuration but in bank case we have not defined that. You want to check back you can go to this screen again and you can open your transactions again and now you can see click on the button you can see over here for cash sales the GL is predefined but for others the GL is not defined so you need to select your GL from which bank cash is deposited or cash is withdrawn from which bank. So you need to go to over here to GL and you need to select the GL over here. So which GL will this take you need to decide. So suppose I take this from the bank HSBC and now I can put the amount I have already defined. The next thing which you define to do is you need to uh, assign the business area. If you want to fill the text, it's optional. Your wish. Cash withdrawn from bank. Now you can move ahead again with the tab button on this on the uh, keyboard and you can assign your business area again over here because now this particular uh, cash journal is your first cash journal 1210 so in 1210 I will be using business area 1210. Once this has been done you can click on to the enter and once you click on to the enter the screen moves now you can see over here it is again a red mark that is entry has been recorded but it has not yet been saved. So to again to post this you can you need to select this transaction mind it it always work in this way first the transaction will be recorded to post that transaction so that the effect can be seen on this opening closing balance you need to select that and you need to click on to the post option over here. So click on to the post 
and once you post it you can see that there was no error so it directly moved from red to green and this means that your balance have been updated and now the balance is eight thousand dollars how eight thousand three thousand is cash sales and five thousand is cash from bank so this is how your cash receipt works so this always works only when you have defined your business transactions and you always need to define in case any business transactions you know you have not defined as of now and you come up later up in your mind then you can go back again to the configuration steps and you can define your business area whichever is left so you can always revisit the configuration steps as per the requirement and the changes you want now I want to see the document number for these transactions how can I go for that so to see the document number you need to select that particular transaction suppose I selected cash from bank and now I want to see the debit credit entry the journal entry and the document number so how you can get this the, docu the document number is already reflecting over here if you can see this is the internal document number this is the document number which that which we defined at the time of creating the configuration steps defining the number range for cash journal document so this is that number which we defined and system internally takes this cash journal number range document number range now to see the accounting you need to select this transaction and then you need to go to follow on document so once the transaction is selected or that particular row is selected you need to click on to the follow on document and once you click on to the follow on document this will show you the debit and credit transactions that took place so you can see that the cash account is debited with 40 posting key and the bank account is credited with 50 posting key so this is your display document same way you can move and you can have a look for your cash sales also over here so this is how your cash receipt transactions took place now let's move and make some cash payment as well so in the cash payment again you need to move to the transaction and you need to select the business transaction so F4 enter now the different business transactions again is in your screen it always takes both receipt as well as the payment now you have to decide for payment which transaction you need to take so payment over here I will be taking suppose cash purchases so if I take cash, cash purchases and I put up over here as thousand dollars I also need to select the GL account because the GL account is not defined in the cash business transactions which we configured so defining the GL I need to again go to F4 to get the list of the GL account and now over here I can select an expense GL so what expense GL shall I take as of now I have not created much of the expense GL so suppose I take it as purchases account you need to put the text for clarification suppose I put it over here as printing and then we can move next ahead for business area so you can find the business area over here you can put your business area 1210 enter once you enter you'll see the, the this particular screen moves to red entry doc recorded so once you again select this particular entry and you click on to the post option you will see your balance will reduce automatically over here and you will see that it will update total cash payment will become 1000 and your closing balance will become 7000 so clicking on to the post the red will move to green over here you can see the red has moved to green and your cash payment has from zero to raised to rupees uh, to dollars 1000 and your closing balance have gone to seven thousand dollars so, so this is how your cash journal works in the same way if you suppose have paid to your vendor so you can again go to the business transactions you 
and suppose I pay to the vendor. So in that case, for vendor, you need to select the vendor line eight uh, transaction. Over here, I have put up over here, suppose two thousand dollars. And now for vendor, you need to take care because vendor is not a GL. Vendor is a vendor. So for vendor, you need to go to the vendor field and you need to select a vendor to whom you want to make this payment. So you need to go to the vendor, then you need to select the vendor. Suppose I selected the vendor over here. And now once I have selected the vendor, now I can move and we can put the business area as well. 1220, sorry, 10. Zero. 20 zero will be used for the different pretty cash here, that is the cash journal. So once I have done this, now once I will put on enter, you will see that this screen will become red. Enter. So you can see it has become red now, means the transaction is recorded. The vendor I have selected over here and the vendor name system automatically updates over here. So I select this transaction now and we go to this post option over here. Post. So once you post this transaction now, you will see that this has moved from red to green. And your payment has increased from $1,000 to $3,000. dollars one thousand for cash purchases, two thousand for payment to vendor. So now your closing balance comes up to five thousand dollars. So this is how your cash journal works. So the same way, all the pity cashiers have their own cash journals. They maintain their accounting, their different business transactions, pity cash transactions in the system, and real time they can come to know that what is their actual balance and what is the total cash receipt they had during the day and what is the cash payment they did during the day and what is the closing balance they should be having at that point of time. So this is how your cash journal works and this is how it gives you a lot of transparency to the system and anybody can check from anywhere that what is the cash balance is left in the screen in the system. So that is much that is the balance which should be lying with the kitty pass kitty uh, pity cashier at that point of time. So that is it. Now suppose I take the date. This is for today's date. Suppose I change the date 3 to the very next day. And once you will change the date and put enter, you will see that these all screen will go back and the closing balance will change to opening balance. So you can see over here on the very next day it automatically make the closing to the opening balance and for the next day that is for 23rd it will show you that there is no receipt payment as of now until those transactions take place. So this is how your pity cash here works, your pit cash journal works. Same way you can work for your second cash journal. So you can select your second cash journal over here. The company code is 1200 and the cash journal is 1220. Enter. You can see it's blank as of now. You can put today's date over here. Or even if you want, you can have a have a previous date as well. Suppose I put it as 2020th as well. So as of now, there is no balance in the pity cashier 2. Or you can see over here, this is pity cashier 2 over here. So in the 2 part also, you can again do certain transactions. First, you need to have certain cash receipt trans transaction and then only you can have any cash payment because as of now, in the system there is no cash payment, there is no balance of cash in the screen. So this is how you need to take care of this. Again let's move to the transaction 1210 for a few more things to know. Now at time it happens that now as of now there is no screen. We need to move to the yeah. So now you can see the transactions over here and payment and in case of receipts. Now suppose any transactions have gone wrong. I have posted a wrong transactions. How would I be reversing that? You cannot reverse these transactions with FB08 which you used to re reverse. So how these transactions can be reversed in those cases? What you need to do in those cases, you need to select this and then you need to go to delete row. Once you delete the row, it will get it reversed. So I am going to delete it. Once you delete, click onto the deletion mark over here. The system gives a message. This will be reversed. Do you want to reverse the entry? 
so if you want to reverse the entry you need to click yes and once you do yes it will ask you for a reversal reason so you need to select the reversal reason over here normally the reversal re reasons could be first or second so I, I could take it uh, the first one so you can try with one and two and all what does it takes and what does it makes okay and you can see that the entry will get reversed and your balance will again change so it's in the process of reversing the document as of now you can see now that the document has been reversed this document has been reversed to this so you can see there is a text written reversal document number is also mentioned to you that is 8002222 so this is how and now from green it has moved to cross that is entry reversed and when you see this balance has updated over here as well from 5000 as a closing balance it moved to $6000 so this is how your reversals can be done from this particular screen so you can try all those things and in, in case you want to take the print of this particular journal you can you can select any of them suppose and you can go to this print cash journal okay it will not work at this point of time because this is a part of a technical uh, person who has to look to this for printing purposes they need to configure the printer and all and on the basis of that only this print can be executed so I hope this is what is clear to you what cash journal is all about how you need to do the configurations how the PT cash or the cash journals can be prepared and multiple cash journal could be there and their respective persons would be maintaining their particular PT cash or the cash journals in the system and they can have a track of all the cash receipts payments for uh, uh, the transactions they did and even if you want you can run for a day you can if you want you can run for the whole week as well even you want you can put the date range from and to or if you want to see for the current period current period means the current month so it will show you for the current month that is November the whole transactions for November period so you click for this it will even show you for that as well so this is how your cash journal works prepare these configure prepare more cash journals do transactions in more and more different cash journals see how the system performs how the transactions are done with each and every such things so it's simple you can carry it on that's all for cash journal for this for the day we'll come up for the next day with a new topic till then have practicing 